Good morning. Welcome to worship. A couple of announcements. Um, there is a session meeting following worship this morning. Um, and I would like to welcome Isabella and Marilyn as our guest musicians. And one very important piece of um, information did not make it into the bulletin. It was printed prior. Um, the memorial service for Jane Ramaker will be this coming Saturday, October 30th at two o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, there you go. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Then let us take a moment and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We bless your name, O Lord. 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 Our opening hymn is number four hundred and eighty seven. Join me in the confession of sin. God of justice, through your prophets, you have made known your desire for peace and harmony for the whole human family. Through Jesus, you have shared your vision of a community where every person is honored and valued. We confess that we have blurred your vision by our treatment of others. We have belittled their talents and devalued their worth. When we have acknowledged them, it has often been to use them in the midst of our clamor for privilege or positions. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Remind us again that being faithful stewards includes treating others with fairness and dignity 
so that none of the gifts you have bestowed on them will be wasted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. us into being is the God who brings us out of bondage. The one who calls us by name is the one who cancels our sin. The spirit who enfolds us is the spirit who frees us to service. May the peace of Christ be with you and let us greet one another with words of peace. lesson from the Old Testament this morning comes to us from the book of Job, chapter 42. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Kezia, and the third Karen Hapach. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children, four generations, and Job died old and full of days. This is the word of the Lord.
This morning's New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, come to us through your word preached, through song sung, through prayers answered. Be with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The very first Oscar that was awarded for Best Picture was for a silent movie. It was called Wings. And it was about two pilots during World War I who were vying for the affection of the same woman. This movie was lauded for its technical accuracy and its incredibly realistic visual effects. It became the yardstick by which other war movies were measured. And the reason for the accuracy of this movie was that the director had been a pilot himself in World War II. Um, and this movie took quite a long time to film because the director wanted to get it just right. And during the filming of this movie, production was stopped for a very long time. And it was sad that it was being stopped because of the weather, but the people who were working on this picture couldn't figure it out because the weather was gorgeous. And the director informed them when they complained and asked. He said, all we have is blue sky. The conflict in the air will not be as visible without clouds. Clouds bring perspective, he said. And he was correct. Only by viewing the combat scenes with the clouds as a backdrop could the viewer see what was really going on. This passage that I read this morning from Job provides us with a good example of a very similar situation. At the beginning of Job, he's suffering. Um, he complained in chapter 3, let the day perish in which I was born, let clouds settle on it. And he continued to suffer. He suffered and suffered until God spoke to him. And that happened in chapter 42, today's passage. He said, God said, I have heard of you, but now my eye sees you. And Job had an encounter with God. And that encounter changed his view of God and God's purposes. There are times in our lives when we wish for blue skies instead of storm clouds. The thing is, cloudy skies often are the thing that reveal God's faithfulness to us. When we look back on 
the stormy times, the clouds in our lives. Sometimes it's only then when we can understand how God has been constantly with us and working with us in our dark times. The book of Job deals with the universal problem of human suffering. More importantly, it deals with the vindication of a good God in the face of evil and suffering. And nowhere is this more evident than in this passage that I read today. God did in Job's life what he did in the life of the nation of Israel. The way God led Moses and the Israelites out of Egypt didn't make sense. And what happened in Job's life didn't make sense either. The Israelites suffered and complained, and so did Job. Both the Israelites and Job learned in process that God is sovereign and God is good. The only difference is that Job always remembered what he learned. The Israelites did not. Job's response to God is one of complete submission to the sovereignty of God. Job affirms that God can do anything and does what is good and what is right. He humbly bows down before God in worship and repentance. He goes from silence to submission. <clears throat> Job didn't fess up to any of the sins that he was accused of. He didn't say what he was told to say. He was innocent of all of the accusations. Job's fault was that in making judgments, he didn't understand, especially when he argued with God, when he argued with God about justice, what is fair. God didn't condemn Job for any of his sins or any of his foolishness, but he did. He scolded Job for saying that he could better explain what was happening in the world and better order and control the things that happened. And Job was wrong on both of those counts. So he repented. In the end, God restored Job because of his sacrifice and suffering. Not because of that, but as a gift to Job. God restored Job's family and his fortune to a level that surpassed everything that he was blessed with at the start of his suffering. He gave him back twice as much as he lost, including another 10 children. These children didn't replace the first 10 children, but they were added to them. Between heaven and earth, Job had 20 children. And the names he gave to his daughter when they're translated were peace, forgiveness, and beauty. The book of Job ends with a positive picture of Job and focuses on his character. He acknowledged all of his children as equals in the inheritance that he left them. And that was really unusual for that time because of the place of women in ancient times. Job probably lived to um, the age, they always, I think in the Bible exaggerate that, but 210 years old it said which apparently was a typical lifespan. I think it just means a really long time. The term old and full of days meant that Job lived a rich life, a full life, until the day he died. He stayed faithful to God all through his suffering, all the horrible things that happened to him, he stayed faithful. And so God rewarded him. He was at a point where he had to confess that he was weak and he was unwise and he was unworthy. 
And all of us have had times in our lives where we've had to make some type of confession. And Job was no exception. Even if we've done nothing wrong, sometimes our pride can get the best of us. And Job was relying on his own strength instead of relying um, on God. How many times have we made that same mistake? Try to rely on ourselves and forget that God is there even. Sometimes when we suffer, we wonder where God is. And we're not alone in asking those questions. In this book, Where is God When It Hurts? Um, the author, Philip Yancey, answers this question. And here's his answer. And it's the same answer for each of us. God has been there from the beginning. God has watched us reflect God's image. God has used pain even in its grossest forms, to teach us. God has let us cry out and echo Job. God has allied himself with the poor and the suffering. God has promised supernatural strength to nourish our spirit. God has joined us, hurt, and bled, and cried, and suffered. God has dignified for all times those who suffer. And God is with us now. Amen. Our hymn is number 391.
um, I draw your attention to the long list of names in the bulletin and let us hold them in our hearts as well. Let us pray. Merciful God, powerful and wonderful, eternally present and graciously close, we are grateful for what you have given us in Jesus Christ, life and love without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift to you the cares and concerns of our hearts the burdens and the worries of our lives. We pray that the sick would be healed, that the broken would be mended, and that the mournful would be comforted. This day we offer special prayers for Judy and their family. We pray that wars would yield to peace, that leaders would gain wisdom, that the forsaken would be gathered in. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled, that the poor would be raised up, and that the anxious would be released. We pray for children in their growing and for youth in their seeking. We pray for those making new starts and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices and for those enduring painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness and for those who are just empty. We pray that your church might claim its potential, that the body of Christ might be strengthened by its many parts, that the work of ministry might be done with joy and thanksgiving. We pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for the faith to trust your promises to us, for the vision to see your kingdom among us even now. We pray for all that you would have us pray. And in the quiet of this moment, we lift up the silent prayers of our hearts. God, we also pray for Grace Lambier recovering from falling off of a horse. We pray all these things in the name of the one who ceaselessly prays for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And trusting in Christ, we offer together the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now return our thanks to God by giving the gifts of our tithes and offerings.
with me? Almighty and merciful God, from whom comes all that is good, we praise you for your mercies, for your goodness that has created us, your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with us, and your love that has redeemed us. Help us to love you and to be thankful for all your gifts by serving you and delighting to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Closing hymn is number 367.